Hello, friends. My name is Isaac. I'm on the YouTube. Today I'll be speaking on the overview of interruption hydration on a numerical analysis. Let's get started. I'll be talking about the battle of this method, steps in deriving this hydrated method, performing hydration to perform to find the appropriate solution. And then we look at that. We look at two examples on this method. This method is said to be named after Isaac Newton and Joseph Rapson. It's an open method that helps us to find the root of this root of a nonlinear equation. It is achieved by producing successive vector approximation to the actual root of a real valid function of this. And so this method is applicable when our f of x and its derivative are both continuous and differentiable. So the function is approximated by a straight line adjacent to the function curve, starting with the initial curve, initial case, then the x intercept of the tangent line gives us the next approximation, which we'll look at it on the graph below. For the graph, starting with this initial case, we find the functional value at this very point, and then find the derivative which gives us this straight line. Okay. So our functional value at this very point is equal to zero. So having this this approximation, we plug into the function again. We happen to get a functional value, find the derivative which is a baseline going, and happens to get our x in plus two. We continue. We plug it in, find the derivative at this very point, which also gives us another position closer to the actual root that we are looking for. So we'll continue to perform our, this iteration until we happen to get the actual root that we are looking for. We want to now look at the steps in deriving this Newton-Raphson iteration. So given a function like this, you know the derivative is the change in the function with respect to the change in our x. So for the graph, we can consider this Cartesian coordinate x n plus 1 with each functional value, x n with each functional value. I realize in the first loop, our x n plus 1 is equal to 0. Then this gives rise to this derivative function. Because that our first derivative happens to give us this, when this one is equal to 0. So we do our little manipulation with the aim of making, getting this best approximation. So we continue with this manipulation until we happen to arrive at this. So here we see the excellent value at which there is converting the solution of interest, the very solution that we are looking for. We may not get the actual root, but where after performing a couple of iterations, when this when we happen to get convergence, then this x n is the actual root that we are looking for. So to perform this, then we need to start with an initial case. Now I want to look at the second derivation on the Taylor series expansion. So assuming this is the root and this of this function, such such that our x n is the approximation to this root, then the difference between the actual root and the x n should be equal to the delta, which is relatively small. So now, having this, we want to now apply the Taylor series expansion. Our x star is the actual root, and we understand that our x n plus 1 plus delta, which is equal to this from here, is also the root. And then our x n plus 1 is also. We also consider this one to be the root. Then, if this one is also the root for the function, then we can now apply our Taylor series expansion in order to consider Taylor series expansion. So this one gives rise to the whole of it. So to get an interruption method, we ignore all the terms from from here. We ignore all the terms which gives rise to this. 
these two terms, the function xn plus delta times its derivative uh, xn is approximately equal to zero. So we understand that our xn, our delta is equal to xn plus this minus xn plus one minus xn, which we obtain from here. We know our x star is the same as xn plus one, which is present in here. So we just substitute it here. So we know our delta is xn plus one minus one minus xn. So we just we where we see our delta, we replace it there. So substituting delta with the whole of this one here, we bring it, we bring the whole term to the other side. It gives us the negative of it. So we have having xn plus one in mind as the root of the function of the root that we are looking, the approximate root that we are looking. We do our little manipulation, it gives rise to our interruption method. So now having obtain the interruptions method, we want to see how this equation can be, can be done. So with our initial guess, we plug it in, give us our x1. Our x1 gives rise to x2. x2 gives rise to x3. We continue until we happen to obtain a convergence value with xn plus 1. So we want to test it. If with the initial guess, our function will actually converge. So we, we equate the far xn to the whole of the interactions method, find the, the derivative of it, which this one gives us 1, and then we rewrite the whole of this one in terms of this, which this one comes up. Find, finding the derivative of this one under the product rule, we hold this term first constant, find the derivative of this, we give us this. We also, the next one we hold this term constant and find the derivative of this, which gives us the whole of this. So the derivative of this whole term gives rise to the whole of this. So we rewrite this one in terms of this. Now notice the whole of this one is going to give us what? One. Which eventually happens to get the derivative function to be this. So with the initial guess, when you test it inside a function, once it's less than one, then we are saying we are sure that our initial guess is going to give us a convergence word sequence. So we can also consider this stuff, uh, convergence criteria as this. We also want to check, check as you know, you are doing programming the case. So when are you going to stop this iteration? So we also have the error formula, which under the error formula we have the absolute error, we have the rigid error. So we are going to stop our equation when we happen to obtain this, of which our x is the actual root and then the x star is the approximate root under consideration. Now one thing that we have to also note is that this error formula is not of direct use as the true value x is not known. So we then want to follow the common use criteria, which we look at the two successive terms. The difference between two successive terms should be less than our epsilon or tolerance. We can also follow this and this or this. So now we want to now apply this formula to solve the problem, this material absence equation to solve the problem. So given this equation that we have here with this initial case, to solve it, we write, we write a function, we write the equation in terms of f of x, which is this. So I want to check if with the initial case that we are given, there is going to be a convergence. We find the first derivative of this, which gives rise to this. Second derivative, which gives rise to this. Then we substitute our initial case into this. Convergence criterion, which at the end of it all gives us 0 0.1134. And this less than one, so hence we are sure that it's going to be convergent. So coming back to the interruptions method with our initial guess, we substitute our initial guess into the whole of this, we just try to this, and eventually we get our x1 to be this. 
we plug in our x1 into this, it gives us our x2. Our x2 happens to give our x3. We continue until we happen to obtain what we convert it. So one thing that we have to notice is the value that we have obtained here add up the third iteration less it's almost the same as the value that we have under the hundredth iteration, which tells us our interruptions method is really fast. Now I want to now look at the second example. Having this equation, which is of the linear equation under this interval. So this initial case, we want to find a root. So we rewrite the function terms of this. But this one, we are sure that there is going to be convergence with this initial case. Uh, if we still want to do the better check to be sure if this initial case there is going to be convergence, we can now follow this. So first, the first derivative gives rise to this. The second derivative also gives rise to this. Which, when you plug in the data, when we substitute our initial case, happens to get 0.2493 is less than 1, so we are sure that it's going to be convergent. So coming back to the initial, our materialsis method again, we, with the initial guess, we started substituting into the function, gives us 1.6316, which is our x1. We plug in our x1, which is our x2, we continue until we have it to obtain a convergence. In the same way, after the third iteration, we have to obtain our convergence value, which indicates our Newton absence method is really surpassed. So, at the end of it all, this is the end of this tutorial. tutorial. And then, there's a the link. It's known that the neutralization method converges quadratically. Please like, comment, and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Thank you.